Hey everybody, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and I'm finally talking about the HD 490 Pro from Sennheiser. Now, this was not sent to me for review. I purchased this, and I purchased the Pro Plus Edition, which sells for $480. The standard Pro is $400, and I'll get into the differences between the two. I also purchased the Sennheiser HD uh, 6XX and the 560S, and the HD 800S was actually sent to me as a loaner from headphones.com, so huge thanks to them. I will have a link in the description below to take you to their site. They sell all kinds of stuff from headphones, IEMs, amp decks, you name it. They have no say in what I say about this review. In fact, they don't know I'm doing a review like this. They just wanted to get my feedback on that bad boy. So um, I'll be talking about how the four of these compare to each other later in the review, and I will have chapters to help you kind of navigate around. But first, we're going to talk about the star of the show, and that is the HD 490 Pro. I'm going to just keep calling it the Pro. The Plus is literally just an accessories add-on. So let's get into that. You have this wonderful case here, which is again why I wanted to buy it. Um, now you also get a, a product key for a spatial audio program to kind of adjust the sound profile of this to kind of mimic different mixing studios. I haven't used that yet. I don't know if I'll do a follow-up video, but I typically don't like stuff like that. I prefer to have, I'm not a professional professional mixing engineer, I just listen to music and play games. So uh, I didn't think it appealed to me as much, um, but that is an extra benefit uh, that's included. Now this is the standard 1.8 meter cable. The Pro Plus adds an additional cable, which is three meters long, and that's on this side. I'll show you that in a moment. Well, you have the gorgeous HD 490 Pro here, and I am pleased to say it uses a mini XLR connection, which is much more robust feeling than any of these other three. I would much rather have this to be the standard cable going forward. You also get this nice little kind of springy coil at the end of the cable, and that's on both wires. So if you ever run out of cable, instead of like instantly tugging on your ear, it's almost like a shock absorber. So I kind of like that. Now, when you first open these, you are greeted with the producer pads. These are the mixer pads which are a very different sound profile, and they also feel different. This is more of a cloth uh, jersey fabric material, if you will. It's very breathable. In fact, they stay cooler than the other pads, um, but I'm mainly having these on for the sound profile. Now, the Pro Plus adds the matching headband, whereas the standard Pro, it leaves you with the velour-looking headband, which is not really an issue. Obviously, it won't match, but from a comfort standpoint, I prefer the velour uh, material. It's really easy to switch. All you do is peel off the Velcro and we swap it out. So I'm gonna leave these out of the case because once we're done going through here, uh, we're not gonna need the case anymore. This is a quick explainer on what's included and the differences. I left this unzipped. Now in this side of the case, you will have the producer pads and the producer headband, which I tucked away in there. This is like the best ear pad material I've ever felt. I love this pad material and I wish all of these headphones use this exact pad material provided it sounded the way I want. This has an impact on the sound, so uh, we'll see where the pros and cons lie with that. And then on the top here, you have a longer cable. It's the exact same looking cable. In fact, both of them come with the 6.3 millimeter adapter that you can just unscrew to remove if you just wanna plug into a 3.5 jack. And again, the same coil system. So I wanna talk about build quality and comfort because it's a Sennheiser product and just like other Sennheiser products, they feel kind of plasticky and light and they don't necessarily come across as a super premium feeling and handling headphone, but 10 years from now, it will still feel that way because regardless of the amount of plastic or how light or the perceived quality is, the truth is Sennheiser headphones are some of the best made headphones when it comes to long-term durability. Now, pad wear is a totally different discussion, but uh, there's nothing different here. It feels really good in hand. These only weigh 260 grams. In fact, when I uh, invite some friends over to do some audio demos, every time they grab this, they're like, holy cow, that thing's light. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, by the way. But I really like this build. So you still have a metal headband up here. It's got the plastic reinforcement underneath, or at least that's where the wire run is. Uh, but I like the metal construction. It also feels really nice to adjust. It's clicky, and because it's marked, it's easy to uh, size it appropriately to your head so you have a nice symmetric match. My favorite thing though, it's not just the pads. These pads are insane, but look, it's full articulation. We have every movement that I would want because not all heads are the exact same shape. And I will talk about comfort and how they compare it later, but my biggest issue with the HD560S was comfort. It just does not work as well on my head 
So even if I did love the sound, I can't wear them that often. And there's a big theme here is you can't EQ comfort. That's something you're stuck with. So it's really important to find a headphone, especially if you're gonna own only a few pairs or one pair, you wanna find something you can wear for a long period of time. The 490 Pro is pretty much perfect because not only is it light, the clamp force is still moderate. It actually has a stronger clamp than the HD 800S, even though it weighs less. But the pro of that is I can move around and it never feels like it's gonna fall off my head. I can be active. I can look down and write something or lean over and get something out of a drawer and it always feels great on my head. It also helps for maintaining a seal. I can position it in the right spot and it's gonna stay there. And with the pads being as compliant as they are with the moderate clamp, it still works well for glasses too. These just dial it up to another whole nother level because not only does all those fitment characteristics still apply, but now you have like the softest possible material touching your skin. And man, I, I love wearing it with this. If I'm not critically listening, I would prefer the producer pads. Both of the pads are pretty breathable. The producer pads run a little bit warmer because of the nature of this uh, fabric material. I like the comfort better and it's not like it'll ever make you sweat, but the mixer pads don't build up heat as much. So for long-term comfort, these might actually be a little bit better for you. There is one glaring thing though, like the comfort would seriously be a 10 out of 10 if it weren't for this one issue. And you can see these like embossed uh, letters on the left and right to tell you which side is which. These stick out like quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to uh, pop this pad off. This is removable, but if you can see that in the lighting, that L sticks out, especially with the uh, mixer pads. After a little bit of listening, they kind of compress just slightly a little over time. My ear starts to like tickle the L and the R. And it's almost like just something just, you know, an eye twitching type level of poking, if you will. And it drives me crazy. Uh, I have to like pull it off my head just to give my ears a second because it's just a weird sensation. Luckily, because as you can see, this screen is so easy to remove. I really hope that um, someone just comes out with a new screen kit that doesn't have the LNR or maybe put it in the corner or something more flat because it's seriously, it's only like a millimeter or two that this is even an issue. These don't do it as easily, but it does still happen for me just barely over time. Uh, if you have a lower profile ear, you're probably never gonna notice it in this point is moot, but I did wanna point that out. All right, I wanna talk about sound quality from a measured perspective first because it takes my opinion out of it. I do have a link in the description below to take you to this website, but I do wanna discuss how this measures on mine. So I'm using a KB006X Pinnaclone. It's a Gross style Pinnaclone with an IEC 711 coupler, all going into an XLR interface. It's got a good preamp, it's worked fairly well, and I've compared my measurements to others. So don't compare my measurement to a different headphone on someone else's rig, like a 5128, and expect an apples to apples comparison. It is a great tool, and go to other people's sites to kind of see you know, how different headphones compare, but I'm gonna kind of translate how some of this measures on mine to what you hear in real life. The big win though is the base extension because the 490 Pro really digs deep. Like for an open back Sennheiser product to have that kind of mid range and sub bass extension is awesome, frankly. I love the way the producing pads sound from a bass amplitude perspective. If you're craving more bass than a typical, you know, Sennheiser or audiophile focused headphone produces. Now this is, it looks relatively flat in the mid range. It, it, sounds and reads a little bit more boomy and bloated compared to the uh, mixing pads that I'll talk about after. But that is how these pads affect, or sorry, the producing pads affect the bass and mid range. There's also a much more noticeable scoop. When you look at 1,500 Hertz, that big dip means vocals, certain string instruments, they all take a step back. And then that immediate ramp up to the 3K region greets you with a somewhat incoherent uh, presentation when you transition from like lower mids to highs it's just not as natural as something like the hd6xx would but overall this is kind of a common tuning thing you see this with hi fi men products you see this with uh, the meze 109 pro and just to put it in perspective um, we're kind of go off script here so if i go to the meze 109 pro look at that sound signature it's it's pretty insane let's change the color how close they are now the Meze 109 Pro sounds a little bit more dynamic and punchy, and it has an even more forward upper treble. It's a little bit brighter and zingy, if you will, regardless of where this dip shows in the you know 4K region. It just reads as a brighter headphone, and it sounds incredible for EDM, but this is the example of that scoop I was talking about 
in that area. And even if you look at something like the Haifamen Sandara open back, notice that that one has a similar scoop. So this is a common thing. It does kind of sacrifice mid-range coherence and linearity for uh, the goal of trying to make things sound wider and more expansive. So for you people craving soundstage, this is one of the cheats, if you will, that kind of simulates soundstage. However, this doesn't read as a very overly wide sounding headphone. The mixing pads shift things quite a bit. You have a lot less bass emphasis, but the bass is very tight and clean and more distinguishable. And I usually prefer these pads from a sound quality perspective because of this. The bass just seems more accurate, even though it's not louder. There's also uh, an onset of higher or more amplitude as your mid-range ramps up into the treble. You can see this blue line kind of picks up instead of being scooped. It's more filled in and that helps a lot with acoustics and vocal heavy tracks. So if you tend to listen to those types of music, then I think you would much rather prefer the mixing pads. Obviously experiment with both because you're gonna get it regardless and see which one you prefer. But not only is this filled in, but the four and 5K region also isn't as forward. So it doesn't actually sound darker necessarily because that bass shelf is also reduced. So I think it just tames it more. And to me, it's a more versatile sound profile. I do like the producing pads. If you're a gamer and you're playing single story games and you want more of an explosion, this has more of a laid back sound to it. And sometimes the deeper bass is better. Or if you watch a lot of movies with headphones, between the comfort of these and that extended bass, I actually really like the producing pads for stuff like that. I also like it more for like metal music because uh, frankly, some, some of those tracks can be so bright and abrasive that I actually want a little bit of a recess just to help kind of tame it a bit. And again, this is all without EQ. Now to quickly compare to some other headphones, here is the 560S, which has a bass response in the middle between both of these pads, but with a more bright, frankly, somewhat abrasive sounding upper mid range. When you look in that whole two to 3K region, it's just more forward. And so things sound a little bit thinner, but also a little bit more um, I, I, abrasive sounds more negative than I'm trying to describe, but it's definitely a harsher sound profile than what you get with the 490 Pro, which seems to tame it just a little bit. Now I'll get into more of the other audio terms as far as like dynamics and stage and all that goes. We're just gonna focus on frequency response first. So let's add the 6XX, and I'm gonna get rid of the uh, 560S for now because this is just gonna get way too busy. The 6XX has more bass roll off. You can see clearly that when you go below 100 hertz, the bass is rolling off quite a bit. So if you're looking for really deep sub bass extension, let's say you listen to a lot of EDM and rap, you'll probably like the 490 Pro more with the producing pads just because you crave that bass depth that frankly the other models don't give you. So when you look at the mid-range tonality, that yellow line starts to look really nice. It's filled in nicely all the way through. It's not overemphasized in the 800 to 1.5K region. Uh, and even though this looks like it's overly bright at 3K, it doesn't sound that way because it's it's not like it's carried into frequencies just above that. I think the roll off just a little bit uh, helps tame it. And I prefer the 6XX sound profile more. And I want to touch this real quick. I'll get into this later, but the 6XX is the same exact headphone as the HD650. And it's a slightly out of the box warmer sound than the HD600 which is slightly leaner, but all three of them are essentially identical. So I'm gonna just call those the 6XO because that represents all three. When you look at the Sennheiser HD 800S, you have a very different sound profile. So let's change this color to make it easier to see. The Sennheiser 800S has a little bit warmer read. The vocals actually sound pretty nice in, especially in the lower register. Um, I love the way it has warmth, but this scoop with this really strong treble above 5,000 K or 5,000 Hertz. So like uh, a 5.5 is really a hot spot for me, 5.6 ish in that area. It just sounds different. I will get into this in a moment and how it sounds from a subjective standpoint, but it definitely reads this a little bit wider, more uh, spread out sound presentation with this kind of frequency response tuning. So let's get into subjective sound quality and what I think of the 490 Pro because um, I'm gonna be a little all over the place. Um, I'll do my best to kind of summarize. So the producing pads, uh, stronger bass for sure. The amplitude is there. If you think of bass as the word boom, so this is gonna be very simple and I haven't tried explaining it this way before. The B in the boom is like your attack, like how hard is it first hit? 
and the mixing pads have a much more immediate, much more clean B, like as soon as the beat hits. This uh, producing pad has a softer B with more oom um following it. That's like the boominess, uh, I don't wanna say bloat necessarily, but it definitely sounds thicker and slower and borderline muddy on some tracks. It frankly does not sound like a premium headphone with certain tracks, it's definitely exposed. So I usually, as mentioned before, prefer the mixing pads. It's just a more palatable sound profile for huge mixed amounts of content. Now keep in mind, this is how I'm interpreting it, it's my opinion. You can like this and that's okay. Frankly, I love wearing these just for the comfort and the sound is like okay enough that with some mild EQ, I'm still really happy. But that is a major shift in the bass just by switching the pads. So the mid-range is actually not that bad. Now it's, again, I'm gonna come down to preference, but with the uh, mixing pads, I actually like the mid-range quite a bit. It's really good up until like two or three K. And I don't mind the recess that happens even with uh, the producing pads because it just again depends on what track you're listening to because some certain sound profiles will favor one track over the other. However, there is a little bit of an oddity with the treble delivery and it doesn't quite show up on my measuring rig as much but what happens is I've talked about the word like shouty before and the 560S is definitely a thinner uh, more aggressive sounding headphone in this region but when you talk normally and then cup your hands around your mouth and then talk, it kind of, I don't want to say it pinches your voice, but it makes it sound a little bit more nasally, if that makes sense. And there are certain songs where it just catches you off guard, regardless of what pad you use. And that's what I was talking about earlier with it not sounding as good of a headphone as the four and $500 price range would suggest. So you kind of have to pick your poison with this. I really think part of what you're paying for is the comfort, to be honest. It does not sound like a $500 headphone, especially when the HD 6XO line exists. Now, when it comes to like dynamics and punch, slam, if you will, most Sennheiser products to me don't have crazy strong dynamics. I feel like the Focal units have a much better dynamic to it, which is like when a bass just hits hard, you can almost feel more of the visceralness of that bass. Even the Meze 109 Pro has better dynamics. This is a softer, rounded off, less textured, bloaty presentation of bass. Again, not terrible, but that's the nature of this pad. Whereas the mixing pad to me is a much more closer representation of what I'd hope for from a bass quality perspective. Not as good as some of the others here, but um, that is at least the benefit of switching to this pad. Now I kind of alluded to this earlier, but when it comes to gaming, I would much rather prefer the mixing pads because that fill in like the 800 hertz to 3000 hertz area that you get by switching to this much more naturally agrees to general target curves for like first person shooters and competitive gaming. This will hamper you quite a bit. It really sucks out some of the key details you need for audio cues, even though this is much more comfortable for long gaming sessions, aside from heat, just because it feels so damn good. Um, I don't like what it does to the sound. Again, this is without EQ. However, if you're playing more casually, you will probably like this more because it has a more relaxed sound presentation and that stronger bass gives you more sense of immersion for the explosions. So try both. They're both gonna work just fine. The driver matching is excellent from left to right. So it has a pretty clear and concise imaging presentation. They just have different sense of width and uh, focus areas as far as what audio cues stand out compared to others. So let's talk about how it compares to some of these bad boys. And I'm gonna start with the less expensive one first, um, usually. The 560S from Sennheiser. This is pretty popular in the gamer side. It's also pretty popular from uh, you know traditional headphone listeners because in this price range, it just has a sound profile that some people like more than the HD 6X O-Line. Even though in my opinion, this is a significantly better headphone, the different sound profile kind of shows why people have different preferences and why it's okay to like different things. The 560S is a little bit more forward. It's a little bit thinner and abrasive and gritty sounding because it has this emphasized detail in that 3K region. It's just more, it's just brighter in general. The bass extension is in between both of these pads on the 490 Pro, and overall, it actually has similar technical capabilities to the 490 Pro. So in terms of like the subtle details, and if you do uh, you know listen to a really high quality audio track, the 490 Pro isn't really much more resolving than the 560S. It sounds much closer to the 560S in terms of overall technical prowess than any of the other headphones I'll be talking about. So this is an excellent value at 200 
compared to the 490 Pro purely from a sound quality perspective, especially if you're okay with EQing some of that forward and is down. Where I struggle with the 490 Pro is when I wear it, again, I, I alluded to this earlier, this clamp is strong and it just, the wear, for where it puts pressure on me, I have comfort issues with the 560S. I can't wear it for a long period of time, even though I see the value and why people like it. This is something you can't EQ. That is something that the 490 Pro just absolutely crushes it on. The gaming differences between the two favors the 560S purely from value. That little emphasis on that bright end up, up top is gonna help with detail retrieval because a lot of audio cues for competitive play fall in line with the way the 560S produces sound. Now you can't EQ comfort. To me, you would only pick the 490 Pro for competitive gaming purely if you want better comfort because you can't fix that with EQ settings later. Is it worth twice the price or not? I don't think so. It's not gonna make you twice as good of a player, but it will make you twice as comfortable, so there's a win there. So let's talk about the 6XO line, and the this causes my biggest issue with the 490 Pro because this exists. This is the 6XX, which in the US is $200. Half the price is the base version of this, and when it comes to technicalities, dynamic, timbre, representing natural sounds the way they should be perceived, for my opinion, the 6XX is just such a superior sounding headphone. That's the conundrum that we face with the 490. Now, because this is a metal uh, telescoping yoke right here, or the headband, you can actually bend this a little bit right here. So um, this video has been posted a lot online. Not my video, someone else has a great tutorial on this. But if you basically do that, put a little pressure specifically on the metal, you can loosen up the clamp a bit. Because out of the box, this is also a little bit uncomfortable, and this very little articulation. There's a little bit there. You can kind of see a little bit of movement and there is some rotation here. So it is significantly better than this. There's even a mod you can do to put a suspension strap on here. That's like third party. In stock form, as long as you stretch it, this sound profile to me is just superior because it's not even just frequency response. The texture quality of the bass, like knowing what kind of instrument is producing the bass, hearing the subtleties more in the music, all of that is apparent when you start a being both of these. Just this seems to be more resolving and more clear. Now I want to throw in an asterisk here because even though I think a lot of audiophiles that have a huge collection of headphones will tend to agree that the 6XX or 650, 600 line is the superior headphone, that doesn't mean everyone is going to like that over the 490 Pro or even the 560S. Some people want a more energetic, punchy sound profile and that's okay. This is just amazing on technicalities, but it is a relatively laid back sound and the bass isn't that deep or punchy either. So if you really want strong bass for like, you know, hip hop or EDM, then both of these might actually be a better sound profile for you. And then you have the legendary HD 800S. This to me is like the headphone for people who don't believe in headphones. There are people out there that just frankly don't like headphones because they like speakers and what speakers can do. Everyone talks about soundstage on IEMs and headphones, but if you hear like a pair of good speakers, even just decent speakers set up properly in the right room, the soundstage of that will blow away any single headphone. The HD800S is like the headphone that kind of breaks the barrier of what the typical constraints are for how wide an image can be. That's not necessarily a good thing in all applications, but it certainly has its own unique place in the headphone world and it's a reason why a lot of people love it because it just delivers sound differently. Even if you EQ the HD6XX to have the same frequency response as the 800 or vice versa, it's still gonna sound different on your head. Part of that is because of the driver design. There is a huge cavity in here in that ear cup and the drivers are angled and all of this interfaces with your ear differently than a lot of other traditional headphone designs. That's part of why it images the way that it does. There is still a sense of warmth and, and great separation in the mid-range compared to bass and treble. Like there's very clear distinction in layers. And to me, the big kicker on the 800S is just how well it handles technicalities. You know, I talked about the 6XX doing all that subtlety stuff really well. The 800 is like that, but a little bit better. And is it worth that kind of a price difference to some? Maybe not. Now that sound profile that I showed you on the frequency response is also playing into the, the way that this is imaging in addition to the driver placement. And it's a pro and a con to me. Everything sounds wide and sometimes you don't want that. You know, it's kind of like when you listen to headphones, you always have that center blob image where everything combines. The 6XX is like dead center in your head. It's definitely the most compressed and narrow sounding even though the tonality is excellent. 
whereas the 560S opens that up. The 490 Pro with the mixing pads is comparably open. And then you have this, which is like the floodgates are down and that blob in your head is like the biggest physical blob that can fit within the two drivers. It just sounds wider and not necessarily always as coherent. <laughs> Certain things just don't sound as natural as they should. And when you pair that with the emphasized treble, sometimes things can be a bit lispy or shrieky. And if, as much as I love some of the cool and unique things that the 800S does, I can't really listen to it with all my genres without EQ. It also doesn't have the same dynamics as the 6XX or 650 line. Bass is a little bit more stunted, even though it's very uh, well articulated. Just doesn't slam that hard. Don't expect tons of uh, sub deep bass out of it, but it is great for acoustics. And especially if you're listening to a lot of live performances or orchestral music, the 800S does some pretty special things in that regard. So here is the conundrum with headphones like this. The 800S does something incredibly special and magical to some tracks, but that same special flavor is also what makes it difficult to enjoy some tracks without EQ. Whereas when I listen to the HD6XX, I can listen to everything and I'm never gonna wince or be like, oh, there's something's really wrong here. However, there are definitely tracks where I feel like something is missing and I just want a little bit more brightness sometimes or a little bit more oomph to the bass. And this is the conundrum we face as headphone collectors uh, and reviewers or people who are just you know, passionate about sound. There isn't a single headphone profile or headphone that is going to work for everybody. And even if you found your perfect headphone, depending on what your track you listen to, that's still not gonna be the perfect headphone. So we need to stop, I think, seeking absolutes when it comes to sound because there are certainly times where any one of these may excel in a certain track and that's okay. The goal of this video is to help you kind of understand where the nuances lie because there's quite a bit to digest with all of these. So that about wraps up the video. I hope I kind of covered all the things I wanted to cover. I could have made this an hour and a half and, and talked about so much with these because frankly, there, there's a lot to digest here. Um, I think the 490 Pro has its place at 400 to 480. My biggest issue is simply the pricing because the 600 6XX and 650 can all be had for like 300 bucks or less. You know, even at a higher price of 350, it's still the superior headphone to this purely from a technicality standpoint and overall natural timbre. You know, when you listen to a music in real life and or listen to an instrument in real life, then listen to it on your headphone the 600 line is going to sound more close to that than any of these others. So that's why I like it so much. Where the 490 Pro has the edge is if you just want stronger bass extension, maybe you crave sub bass or a more exciting energetic sound profile and you find the 6XX is too flat or dull sounding to you, then yes, this is a great wake up call. In fact, the 560S is also a great wake up call to that. You're sacrificing some naturalness to it. It's not perfect, but it's still fun and some of the details, like the subtle details, but it can fill that desire for more bass or more treble, something that's more fun to listen to. The 800S, let's be real. I mean, this thing is so much more expensive than all of these. You really have to know what you're getting into at that price range because there's so many options you can pick above and below that price. The trick is how everything sounds wide, but to me, that's not necessarily a better thing. It's just a different presentation. I would daily drive the 6XO line over all of these simply be with some comfort mods. I think it's the better headphone for me personally, but I do appreciate the new approach of what Sennheiser's doing. I mean, they made some great calls. This new cable setup, the mini XLR, the full articulation. If they make a 6XO with this, man, they could charge 500 bucks and I'd still buy it. I don't even care because that is just so comfortable to wear every day. So there's definitely some good things about it. Hopefully you found this review helpful. I'm hopefully I didn't make it harder to decide, but don't forget to like and subscribe because I'd love to see you at the next video. With that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye.